Gene, it's a true pleasure to have you here. Well, it's great to be uh, here. In fact, I enjoy working with the young people that I met earlier today. I signed a bunch of autographs and tried to get them all pumped up to uh, sign up for the uh, science, engineering, technology curriculums within their school. And uh, when they get started, keep going and never surrender. When we look at living legends in today's environment, <laughs> you're very few. You're one of them. Okay. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, Apollo 13 whenever we hear a name. And it is important for us to revisit that uh, for the younger generation who haven't yet you know, learned much about you. Um, everybody is aware from my generation and before me. Um, when you look back now, you know, every, every decade or so, I'm sure you visit, uh, every few years you re revisit that. What was the critical uh, component there as a leader that helped you bring it down? I believe the, uh, the background I had when I grew up, I was a military aviator. I had uh, an uh, engineering degree, aeronautical engineering. But I had a lot of hands-on experience. So that uh, science, instead of being something in paper or theoretical, was very practical. I used science on a daily basis. I used the mechanics. I, I learned to build aircraft. So it was a ability to take what I learned in the classroom and then apply it every day. In fact, it was amazing. I'd be driving down the street or riding, and I'd say, well, I wonder how that happened. Gee, isn't that, isn't that a marvelous machine? I love just the beauty of that thing. And uh, that was really addressing the science engineering. And then as time went on, I started looking at the stars. And it was there that I really found that uh, I was very limited in my knowledge, and I had to seek and find and work and grow. When you look at the current state of NASA, they are stopping many explorations, the private enterprise is coming into place. Um, what is your take on this? Why do you think you know, we're not doing as we did before? I believe it's a, a very difficult time uh, within the United States and I think NASA is uh, basically uh, one of the uh, challenges that exist within, uh, within our nation. We have to find some way to keep developing the technologies that we need for the future. Key thing is risk is the price of technology and difficult missions like going into space, going to the moon and to the Mars forces new technologies to emerge. And I believe that is how NASA will eventually find its way. And I believe our nation has to recognize that if we want to provide for our people, we have to develop the cutting-edge technology that is going to keep the economic engine of the country going. I can pick three problems. One is the importance of a uh, nation, um, patriotism, the availability of the right science courses, and the third is the overall economic development of a nation. We are lacking in all these three areas uh, compared to your generation who are very resilient, who are focused and driven to yeah. do something for the country. Um, something has to you know, be disruptive here. Your thoughts? This is, uh, this is probably the most difficult challenge that not only our nation but the world uh, faces. I grew up, I uh, grew up in a boarding house uh, during World War II. The soldiers, sailors, and airmen that uh, fought the battles over Europe and in the Pacific basically were my role models and throughout my entire life I had a, a mother, a single parent, my father died when I was young, who was basically inspirational from a standpoint of the work ethic she had, the basic integrity we had. I had teachers that basically uh, took a hold of me when I was having difficult times and convinced me, never give up, never surrender. I then went into flight training and I learned the power of leadership there. I moved into flight test and I ran across probably the most influential person in my life uh, by the name of Harry Carroll. He was a renaissance man. He tried to do everything. He was a poet. He acted in inner theater, superb engineer. He was an inventor. And I asked him, well, Harry, why did you do this? And he said, you know, when I die, I want to be all used up. And I thought, what a marvelous way to live. This guy is giving. He's finding. He's searching. He's learning. He is completely intrigued by everything that's going around him and he wants to know why. And I think that is the, the key thing we have to take with our young people and provide the inspiration to learn why and how things exist.
and become one of these people that is going to be moving and make things happen. You know, there's three kinds of people in the world. Those people who watch things happen, those people who wonder what happened, and there are those that make things happen. The young people have to be the ones who are making things happen. If you don't provide the ecosystem, it is a flat world. Uh, knowledge is permeable. There are no knowledge boundaries anymore. Somebody else will do it and do it in a far fetched land. Um, I just wanted to learn from you if you were given the rope, you know, what would you do? One or two things as a lesson. That's a uh, difficult, uh, that's a difficult question, but I think the first thing that I would do is find some way to inspire the young people of not only our nation, but all nations to seek out and find and obtain an education. I think the second part would be to find uh, leaders within the various nations willing to take those young people who just acquired that, that education and put them to work. Let them develop themselves. You know, I was fortunate in the space program. I came in, we had a generation of leadership that said, well, go do it. And then they turned us loose and allowed us to do it. So I think the key thing is, is to trust the young people to move into the future and carry the nation, the world, the companies, the communities into the future. Well, the lighter note towards the end, uh, the most famous line from the movie, <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Uh, that has been the lasting legacy. Your thoughts on that? That was... Uh, I was so busy when I got that call, I had already received several indications of problems from my very controllers. And all that did was again trigger me to uh, try to figure out what the problem was they were talking about. I didn't know because I had so many problems. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe there's something specific that's bothering them. But the, I think the, uh, the key thing in the Houston we've got a problem, it really established uh, the boundary that we were in a survival situation and it was now time to take charge. You know, I was a, a fighter pilot, and fighter pilots my day used the term looking into the eyes of a tiger. And this is the stark and lonely feeling that you run across when you're trying to survive. Well, I think the key thing is we have to develop that survival instinct as individuals and turn it to our advantage in accomplishing those things that are great. It's a true pleasure, Gene. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Have a good one.